Hi, I'm Pastor Mary Beth and this is the Trempolo United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining me today. It is um, Sunday, March 19th, 2023. And today we're going to be talking about one of Jesus' miracles. So let's turn to that right now and we find it in the Gospel of John in the ninth chapter beginning with the first verse. Hear these words. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents. This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. While it's daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in this world, I am the light of the world. After he said this, he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smeared the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went away and washed, and when he returned, he could see. May these words bless you this week. Now there are a bunch of things in this story from the Gospel of John that make it a wild ride. First of all, there is the ancient belief that if a parent sinned, and whose parents haven't actually, um, that the child would uh, have some sort of physical issue or illness. Second, this man didn't ask Jesus for help. Jesus just turned in the, stopped in the middle of the road, he argued with the Pharisees a little bit, and then he turned his attention to a man born blind. He didn't see this man as a theology project. He saw this man as an opportunity to do God's work. And third, what in the world was in that dirt? I mean, there are mud pies, and then there are mud pies. In church um, on, on Sunday today, there's a couple of people, Earl Adams and Beth Moon, that are going to be singing the words, If you seek the Lord in beauty, you have not far to go. Let me show you God is there. And it's from the song, Be Aware of Wonder by Douglas E. Wagner. So I would like us to do that. I would like us to hit the road with Jesus for a minute and see what Jesus is seeking. So imagine that you're there. It's hot. It's dusty. You're in a small crowd and you're walking along a gravel road, straining just a little bit to hear the teachings of Jesus. All those sandals scraping the ground, the occasional laugh, a cough now and again. And then Jesus stops and he sees a blind man begging because really that was the only option open for people of that time born with a disability. Jesus doesn't just look at him. Jesus sees him. And because Jesus stopped and saw the man, now you see him too. And what do you feel? Do you feel curiosity? I mean, you never know what Jesus is going to do. Do you feel compassion? It would be very hard to be blind. Do you feel a little impatient? Let's find some shade. It's hot out here and I'd like a glass of lemonade. But what if it wasn't the blind man that Jesus stopped to help. What if it was you? What if it wasn't physical blindness that Jesus recognized in you, but some, some other way of not seeing? Now maybe we aren't seeing the things, um, whatever is leading us to do things that are not good for us, like addiction, like not getting enough sleep, or overeating, or overfilling our calendar. Maybe Jesus sees our blindness as a habit or a practice that we do that isn't good for our partner, or a dear friend, or a family member. Like all the things I just mentioned, and maybe even perhaps um, failing to give that person enough full attention, or gentleness, or time. And sometimes we are just too close to an issue or a matter to focus on it. 
My mom and dad used to joke that after the age of 60, when they wanted to kiss each other, they couldn't really see each other's faces and they decided that maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. Sometimes we're just too close to focus. If Jesus turned to me right now and saw me, I mean really saw me, what blindness would he catch? To what am I turning a blind eye to myself, within myself? And for that matter, how am I blind to how others might behave, be behaving? In 2002, Ariel Castro began abducting women, uh, kidnapping girls, actually. He held three of them in his basement for more than 10 years. He didn't seem so bad, the neighbors said at first after Castro was arrested. But now that they thought about it, it was strange that the way that the back of the house was completely lined with tall sheets of plywood. As they began to learn the details of the abductions and the terrors of these girls, the neighbors realized that they had failed to see what was right in front of their eyes. And the police failed to see too. Hindsight is great, except when it's too late. There's the old, if you see something, say something. What would Jesus see when an abuser gets away with it? Because he's just, or she, is just misunderstood. And I think those holy eyes might see right through the argument that risky driving or hooking up or beer parties are just boys being boys or kids having fun. I wonder if what we fail to see and acknowledge in others that we may or may not have the power to change, by the way, are signs for us to either steer clear or reach out or set boundaries. What Jesus really think, seeks, I think, is for us to find a new way forward when we are blinded by our own or another's harmful behaviors. But you know, this works both ways. Let's, let's rejoin, let's go back to Jesus on that dusty road. You can almost smell the heat in the air. You can see the shimmer somewhere a long way off, a dog barks. And Jesus has turned to you again. This time, his eyes are not so much sympathetic as joyful. You can see the little crinkles, the happy crinkles at the corners of his eyes. Jesus has just looked into your heart and seen, really seen, the good within you, the wonder within you. He's seen how you called that coworker last week just to see how she is. He's noticed that when you speak of your friends and your family, it's with respect. As Jesus looks into your eyes, he knows that you know the Son of God doesn't miss much. And he has not miss, missed the fact that you read a little bit of his favorite book last week or that you prayed to the same Father he prays to. Jesus is most definitely not blind to the fact that you are working to be his hands in the world every day in your own special world and in your own special way. Is that what Jesus sees right now? However we are born, however we are flawed and fragile and a little bit blind, we are this way partly by virtue of being human. And even so, God's works can and will be re revealed, will be displayed in us. When we see things in a new way for the first time, it is life changing, not just for us, but for the people around us. And when, when you're done here, I encourage you to, to go to, to your computer and, and look in Google and look for um, the videos of babies that have just been, get, toddlers that have just been given eyeglasses for the first time and they can see their mother or their father, the world around them for the first time. When we walk along with you, Jesus and when we do this with other followers, when we make sure to stop along the way and see and respond to need. God's love is revealed. What in the world was in that dirt? Faith and obedience were in that dirt. The blind man along that, the road that, that day um, allowed Jesus to work. And then he did what Jesus asked him to do. And if you combine faith 
and obedience with the DNA of God, which was most certainly in that dirt, most certainly in that mud, you get healing. You get things you've never seen before. You get things that rather than being blind to opportunity, you become fully aware of its presence. Rather than being afraid of what we might see, we see what might be possible. This week, may we wash away our blindnesses in the pool of God's love. May we seek the Lord in beauty and find that God is there. May we open our, our eyes and our hearts and our hands so that God's mighty works might be displayed in us. Amen.